Have you ever thought that maybe being too attractive could be a disadvantage at work? Or maybe your look is the secret key to your success. So we're talking about pretty privilege in the workplace today because after I shared the dark side of pretty privilege, you all came back with so much to say about your traumatic experiences having pretty privilege at work. And child, when I say the horror behind these stories, like I could not. I'm going to share some of these at the very end of the video. Let's chat about some pros before we get to the cons because there's so many blessings that come with being beautiful. When you're beautiful, you get sometimes handed opportunities because you just attract those people who have the power to do so. You also make a very positive first impression. The first impressions are everything. So visually, you know, we're just very appealing to the eye. There are so many women, I feel like, in society that are winning because of their looks or at least their looks got them through the door. Yes, when you have pretty privilege, literally opportunities are just constantly knocking at your door. But I also wanted to talk about the dark side of it in the workplace. The boss may show favoritism towards you because you're beautiful or because he just finds you stunning or maybe it's not even that, maybe it's because you honestly have such a sweet personality, you do what's asked, X, Y, and Z. But to other people looking on the outside, they see that you're only getting favoritism because of your pretty privilege. So what they water down is maybe your communication skills, your listening skills, whatever it is that's getting the job done because they're jealous of the fact that you're getting favoritism, not only because of your looks, but because of your comp competence. Did I say that right? Competence? <laughs> but you know, I think it's kind of natural and I also understand both sides to it when, you know, you're being showed favoritism. And also it can be uncomfortable because maybe your boss loves to almost admire you in front of other people and it's kind of like uncomfortable maybe they have a slight crush on you or want to just get your attention that way it also gets the attention of other people and so people look at you like competition because maybe they want to be manager of the office and because the boss is giving you all of his time and attention and praises, they feel like, oh, this is my competition in order for me to get the higher paying job. It definitely creates a very uncomfortable and competitive environment with not only women, but maybe other men at work. Well, because we are beautiful, a lot of times it's intimidating. So what people will do is they'll also treat you like you have a very low IQ. <laughs> um which is just very insulting but that's usually the first tactic they like to do and they also love to alienate so this just creates a very tense competitive and sometimes aggressive environment for the women who do have pretty privilege some people will literally try to sabotage like for example with me people will literally try to sabotage and throw me under the bus about things that just didn't make sense or attempt to in order to get a little bit of light shown their way. And you can be someone who is always on time to work, always dressed appropriately, always getting the job done, a whole bunch of great things that you do at work, why people love you, you're amazing at communicating, like people can always count on you, maybe you help out the assistant, you do things, you go above and beyond for your job. And this next one really sucks, but sometimes being the pretty girl at work means they treat you like an object. And so people will start to harass you. And that's so annoying, like especially with men, like we come to work to make money, to build a career or whatever your goal is, not to get harassed and to get hit on every other day or felt made to feel uncomfortable in our skin because someone cannot control themselves. It definitely sucks because you wanna have a healthy work environment. You don't wanna be constantly 
looking out for the advancements of your colleagues you know what i mean like because no one has time like i'm at work and my chicken just got finished cooking i'm so damn hungry but i'm gonna finish this video people will literally continuously treat you like that because that's the way that they are comfortable expressing their envy for you and also that's just how they cope with how they feel about you so like i said earlier i have been my own boss in my adult life for most of my adult life um and one of the major reasons is because i just saw how people treated me in different scenarios and i knew like that's not something i wanted for myself and i also didn't want to build someone else's dream um but that's a conversation for another day if you guys have like any questions or want me to talk on a certain topic about being like an independent entrepreneur successful model i'm definitely down for that so anyways when i was younger i decided i wanted to be my own boss so very quickly after college i did that i've just always had this grand vision of myself and i knew that with hard work and perseverance i could get to where i see myself going so honestly now i don't experience much of that mistreatment because if someone ever mistreats me or is just lacking that business etiquette or you know what i mean i can just see that little green-eyed monster and just the ugliness come out like cut or no more business or you know what i mean because it's also a safety concern you don't ever want to put yourself in harm's way and feel like you're someone's piñata that they're constantly beating at you know what i mean and because i am a businesswoman like this is business we don't have time to be playing like high school you know what i mean so i very rarely run into people who cannot control their emotions around me because of how i have set myself up i work for myself and very independent and if something is uncomfortable for me or i don't like the treatment i walk away because i don't need to be around that and they don't deserve to be around me obviously yes you can go to hr and let them know what's going on i a thousand percent agree with doing that um i'm just gonna speak from what i did in order to build a better life for myself and level up my environment and pick and choose who gets to be in my energy when you elevate your surroundings and the quality of people the less you have to deal with building my own lane and my own business means i control who has access to me constant alienation and mistreatment from people honestly turned out to be my biggest blessing because it gave me the push i needed to work hard and build my own business build my own brand work for myself and answer to no one but god so i do encourage a lot of you girls to become your own boss this isn't like a boss babe video i just honestly wanted to share with you all what i've gone through in workplaces and how i have found my strength in the dark side of pretty privilege in the workspace and how i've allowed it to develop me into a better person and a smarter businesswoman sometimes god is placing those people there so you see you don't need to deal with mistreatment do you have a dream that you've been chasing is there something that you cannot get off your mind maybe god keeps sending you these visions well maybe it's a sign not to say that that excuses people, but you know, sometimes looking at things like, you know what, I'm better than this. Or, you know, maybe things haven't changed after you've spoken to HR or reported certain things, or maybe it's just a constant issue with people. You know what I mean? Like the problem is in you babes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe it's just God showing you like, I want you to build a better life. Honestly, what God told me when I was younger was that if I followed the dream he put in my heart, he promised to place people around me who were going to respect me, appreciate me, and love me for my craft and what it is that I do and just my whole aura and who I am, you know, because I just really found myself shrinking who I was to make other people comfortable or not speaking up or not showing who I was to the best of my ability 
because I didn't want to get bullied or I didn't want to feel alienated at work. By the way, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Niobe underscore. I share a lot of my model work on there. And on TikTok, I do share a lot of my influencing work. I have started to incorporate a lot of my brand deals from TikTok on Instagram. So if you're into like all the things you like on this channel, you're going to love it there. So I am going to go over a few of the comments that inspired this video. And I'm going to be looking at my phone so I can read word by word what you all said. And I just want to take the time to say thank you to everyone who felt comfortable sharing their stories. Um, that really means a lot. And I don't think you realize how many women you inspired. Like you inspired me to make this video. Daisy Wazy 4139. When I was a nurse at the ER, it was horrible. There were so many rumors spreading about me sleeping with doctors. I left work crying almost every day. Rose Miller 6388 says, especially in the workplace, jealous women giving you a hard time constantly. The mean glares, the attitude, and the rude behavior, even when you're super nice, quiet, and just focused on yourself. I've heard so many false rumors about myself started by jealous people. So many people have tried to run me from my job, even a guy who worked closely with us, tried to sabotage me many times so that I would quit, and I found out it was because he was secretly attracted to me and wasn't comfortable working around me. Oh my gosh. A honeysuckle said, I just turned 19, but when I got my first real job as a perfume sales associate this summer at 18, I had no experience. So many of my coworkers, all much older than me, were confused as to why I was there. Lots of the women would set me up for failure and the grown men would act entitled to my time and attention. I didn't really know any better because this was the first time of experiencing the world. I also got harassed by many male customers who looked like they could be my dad's age. I literally quit after three weeks because I'd go home feeling anxious, drained, and super grossed out. I've never felt objectified like that, and I had never been sexually harassed until then. So I was incredibly scary. It low-key feels like my innocence was taken advantage of and I'm not sure I could ever work retail again. Jordy's World 2799 says, yeah, this is the sad truth. I started a new job and they hate me off the rip. I'm not doing anything to hurt anyone and I barely talk to anyone, but I go out of my way to be kind when I need to be and be a light in the room. Girl, that's, that's what triggers them. It has taken me a while to just learn not to take anything personal because I found myself feeling like, oh my God, like, is it because like, as I said something, I was over analyzing myself in order to find the reason why some people wouldn't like me. And it was making me feel like very insecure and very like, oh, I'm the problem. I found myself doing exactly what they wanted, which was like shrinking myself. And once I started to understand and learn how to not take things personally i was able to get my power back and move confidently i hope this video helps anyone going through mistreatment in the workplace and inspires all of my beautiful ladies with a calling to take control of their lives and take a step back from what is taking away from you make sure you like this video and subscribe to the family down below i'll see you guys for the next one bye